Hi, I'm Luke, uh, founder and CEO of Stadium Apps, and I want to give you an adventure on keeping Grandma out of the fast lane while she's driving her golf cart. So there's two communities in the US, probably more, where golf carts are a primary form of transportation. Uh, people use them to get everywhere, to get to the grocery store, to get to their neighbor's house, et cetera. And you can't see super well on the maps, but if you actually zoom in, there's quite a few uh, connections in the roads between the primary roads, where there's golf cart only lanes. And a few months ago, uh, someone reached out to us because they had a problem. And the problem was, Grandma was taking the golf carts and driving on roads like this. And I imagine that you don't want your grandma driving on this. I don't want to drive on this with a golf cart. And they really needed a solution. Um, they had custom apps. These apps had integrated routing. Um, but they kept getting routes that put people on roads like this. And not only is it unsafe, it's also illegal. Uh, the golf carts had to stay on a particular type of road. And it was really a bad situation. And no one had the resources to, to understand the problem. So they came to us. So why don't they just take a shortcut and use a bike route? Um, most of you use routing every day. You know you can use pedestrian routing, you can use bike routing, you can use car routing. Why not just treat golf carts like a bike? Well, unfortunately, they're not the same as bikes. Um, when you look at the, the laws in these communities, bikes can go a lot of places that the golf carts can't. Golf carts can go places the bikes can't. And at the end of the day, they would have had the same problem, just in a, a slightly better way, uh, with golf carts on bike lanes instead of golf carts on fast highways. So before we jump into saving grandma, a little bit about Stadium Apps. Um, we are a location API provider. We help companies use base maps, static maps, routing, navigation, geocoding in their products to create really anything you need that touches location. Um, we do it in affordable and focused on this talk in a flexible way, help you actually solve your problems, not just the solutions we've thought up. And we try to make it fun for the humans that actually do the work. So let's take a step back and understand what goes into a route so we can understand how we solve the problem of routing for golf carts. So it all starts with a road network graph. Um, you can basically think of this as a complex network of roads. Each of those roads, lanes, et cetera, has a certain, certain details with it. Um, so it, for instance, some roads allow heavy vehicles, some don't. Some um, allow golf carts, some allow bikes, et cetera. And these are called constraints. Um, these also are things like, can you turn right from this road to that road, et cetera. You take all of this data, you put it together in what's called a graph in the computer science term. And you also understand, for instance, how long is each segment of the road, how fast can you go, et cetera. That's the graph. Then the routing engine applies what's called a profile, which is rules that say this type of vehicle can do this type of action on this type of road. Um, for instance, some heavy vehicles can't turn left on certain roads. They have to take a different route because that'd be uh, disallowed. Um, this profile also looks at the road network and calculates a specific cost for that type of transport. For instance, if you are on a bike and you have a road that goes uphill, you want to prefer a road that goes downhill to that uh, particular road. So it costs more, it um, takes more time to go on a particular part of the road. Um, this cost can either be something like time, you could also use costs that are focused around saving fuel, or um, making it easier uh, for you to, to, to cover that part of the road. And then there's additional constraints for each type of vehicle that travels. Um, so for instance, some of these roads don't say that a golf cart can go on them, um, but the profile actually says this type of road can always have a golf cart, or this type of road can never have a golf cart. So the road network graph has some of the details, the profile adds additional details, and the routing engine takes all of that, puts it together, and comes up with the route, the optimal path with the lowest cost from point A to point B. So if we want to put together a solution for golf cart routing, 
what's missing, what wasn't there before we took on this project. Um, and it kind of goes down to those two components. You have the graph and you have the profile. Uh, it first starts with getting all the, the roads and the paths in those communities. Um, so both Peachtree City and the villages had only part of their roads in OpenStreetMap. Um, we talked to each of their just departments, and initially they really wanted to keep that internal. They wanted to build a custom solution. But when they realized how easy it would be to upload the data to OpenStreetMap, um, how much more cost effective it would be, we ended up convincing them that open data is actually the better solution. And now, six months, 12 months later, they're actually really happy they use OpenStreetMap because they also get better maps from other providers. Um, and it's actually worked out really, really well. We also needed, in those communities, each of those side roads or those main roads that could never have a golf cart on them or always should prefer being used by golf carts, we had to tag that. Uh, that's also uploaded in OpenStreetMap. And again, it's worked really, really well. So that's the data that was missing. And then we needed to build a custom golf cart profile. Um, so a lot, some interesting things that went into this is talked a lot about access, like the ability to go on a particular part of road, but a golf cart also has very different speed limits. Um, some of these golf carts are really fast. They can actually go 40 or 50 uh, miles an hour, um, so like 80 kilometers an hour, which is just insane on these um, cart paths. So we actually have to build into the profile more like 20 uh, kilometers an hour to make sure that people don't expect to get there in five minutes when it should actually take them 15. Um, and a few other details went into the profile, but the vast majority of it was all about what roads can you drive on and what's the best way uh, to, to prefer, for instance, the golf cart path as opposed to a bike path or a, a sidewalk. And so when you put the whole solution together, really it started with putting everything into OpenStreetMap. There was thankfully already a uh, tagging system in OpenStreetMap to tag each of the roads with golf cart equals yes plus access. Um, so it sounds really complicated, but at the end of the day, it was a lot of people going into OpenStreetMap and saying, yes, this road can have a golf cart, and yes, this road can't. Then um, for the routing engine, uh, we've used Valhalla for I think eight years now. And so that was what we wanted to build the golf cart profile in. Um, Valhalla comes with a, quite a few advantages over some of the other um, open source routing solutions. There's quite a few. Um, but Valhalla, we'll see a little bit later how, uh, how much time it actually ended up saving us in the development process. And then this wouldn't have happened without the local governments and even some local mappers coming together to create this data. Um, the apps that we were helping build were mostly funded by the government. So the municipal government wanted to create this app or had this app and had this problem. And of course, if the, the government has an app that's telling people to take the wrong routes, it creates a, a big problem for everyone. Um, so they were heavily invested in getting a solution that worked. So at the end of the day, we wanted to keep Grandma from taking the pink path. Um, it's a little bit hard to see on the screen here, but if you look at the pink, this is a major parkway. It's actually where I took the imagery from, uh, the three-lane uh, going both directions highway. And we really needed the green path, um, which includes golf cart dedicated paths, et cetera. So how do we get there? Um, from a code perspective, it was actually pretty simple, only about a thousand lines of code. And it starts with tag processing. So you start with building the, the graph, the, the road network. This comes from OpenStreetMap, like I said. So you have to process each of those roads from OpenStreetMap. You have to understand what the tags are. Um, this is in Valhalla, it's done in Lua. Um, so a pretty simple scripting language for that. Then we created the profile. This is the vast majority of the code. You can see it's 600 lines um, to actually understand the specifics for golf carts. Um, like I said, it came down a lot to access what, where can you drive and where can you not drive, but also speed limits um, were really fun. We didn't expect that to happen. Um, and this was the majority of the work. Uh, and of course, you need tests for a good solution to, to know it works. 
So in that, in that tag work, uh, the vast majority of it was just parsing the, the data coming from OpenStreetMap, putting it into the graph, and at the end of the result, one of the advantages of Valhalla is it uses a, a tiled method. Um, it's getting a little bit into the technical weeds, but what it actually allows you to do is create a graph network for a very small part of the world and test it very quickly. So we were able to iterate on this um, quickly as opposed to a very long build process. And then once you have that road network, you actually need to go into calculating the cost. Um, so to go a little bit more technical, what ends up happening is you get a, a graph with edges and nodes. So each road is, a, is an edge, and then where the roads intersect is a node. And you use the A star algorithm to find the best path between them. And in Valhalla, what you end up doing in the profile is basically for each of the the road parts, you have to calculate a specific cost. And when you add all the costs together, that's your, your, your um, route's total cost. Um, so the profile that we created was taking that understanding for golf carts, what does it cost? For instance, elevation doesn't matter too much for golf carts. You're not pedaling a bike, um, so you don't care if you're going uphill. Um, but you do care if it's, the, if it's a sidewalk. You don't want to be going on sidewalks, so you completely say that that's uh, untraversable. Put all that together in the profile. This was the 600 lines of code. And that was the extent of it. Um, Valhalla was, like I said, there's three or four different open source routing solutions. We looked at actually using all of them. Um, but the advantage of Valhalla is we were able to do this quite quickly because when you ask for a route from Valhalla, you can actually specify a lot of the options when you make the routing call as opposed to in the code. Most of the uh, solutions actually take these profiles and if you want a routing solution for bikes, golf carts, and cars, you actually build the data three different times, which can take quite a long time for the world. Um, and then the cost for each of those roads is built in. Uh, so you could never use the same road network for bike routing and for car routing. Uh, but with Valhalla, you can actually do that. And then when you create the route in Valhalla, you can specify um, dynamic values at um, when you create that route, when you ask for the route from the routing engine. So we were able to create the basics of the routing profile and then fine tune it kind of on demand as we were going and make it a lot faster as opposed to having to rebuild everything from scratch, which would have taken uh, probably 15 or 30 minutes every single time we wanted to change some small parameter. Um, it's also pretty simple, a thousand lines of code for a new routing solution is uh, really, really good and uh, quite happy with how simple it actually turned out to be. Which means that if you have something other than a golf cart, um, adding a new profile to Valhalla is, is quite straightforward. In the code itself, there was a lot of, um, was the most complexity. At first we had to do multiple languages, uh, so you needed C++ for the core of the routing engine, and then you needed Lua to kind of patch everything together with importing the data. Um, so it's not simple from a, a language perspective. Uh, there was quite a bit of hidden linkage. Uh, Valhalla, because it's made to be very fast, um, ends up using quite a lot of bit fields. So you have to go into um, understanding a lot of data structures that are just um, integers that have a single bit flipped. So you have to go through and, and you find out a lot of things by the code crashing as opposed to understanding it directly. Um, but after a few iterations, that wasn't too bad. And overall, I would say that when we started the project, I expected it to take uh, two to two to four weeks, and we ended up creating the full profile in less than a week. Um, so overall, the simplicity of creating a new profile in Valhalla was uh, significantly better than I expected, um, even after we'd used the, the project for, for many years. So what's next? Um, well, we're not going to stop with golf carts. Uh, golf carts is a solution for a few communities in the US, uh, maybe elsewhere. But there's a whole new crop of vehicles coming. Um, 
Low-speed vehicles is kind of the regulatory environment in the US. Um, there's a similar regulatory environment in the EU for vehicles like um, very small cars, electric vehicles. And there's a growing need to understand uh, how to best route them. Um, we are working with clients to generalize this profile from just golf carts to also these low-speed vehicles. Um, because again, they can go places cars can't, but they can't go many places that cars can. Um, and of course, they're not the same as bikes. And we'll need to work with, again, in the regulatory environment to understand the rules for each, each country. Um, and we're looking for clients to, to work with for this, uh, beyond the ones we're already working with. And what I talked about today was the first half of the big problem of creating a routing experience. Um, so when we think about routing, we think about a phone with uh, where you should turn and how far it's, how long it's going to take, et cetera, like you see on the screen. Um, and that whole experience is something that's missing in free and open source software right now, which is why we're creating the Ferrostar uh, Nav SDK. Uh, this is a brand new project. Um, we're creating it with an open license. It's designed to be flexible. So if you want to create a navigation solution, uh, we just looked at creating a routing profile, but that's just the raw data. If you actually want the user experience of getting people from point A to point B integrated into your product or your app, um, we're creating Ferrostar to make that a lot easier. It's going to be pluggable as far as what routing engine you use, um, what map toolkit you use. It's mostly based on MapLibre right now. Um, but we are actively developing this and looking for people that want to contribute to a brand new navigation experience. So thank you. Thank you, Luke, for this insight and the solution to quite a unique problem. It's very interesting. So do we have any questions from the audience? Yeah, so first of all, very interesting project. Um, so how do you so basically Valhalla uses routing tiles. So how do you handle uh, dynamic coasting, or how often do you update the tiles, or is it a problem not to handle dynamic coasting at all? Um, so we update the tiles weekly, um, but the costing itself is actually always baked into the profile. Um, the the roads have a certain amount of data baked into the tiles. So the, the tiles themselves have the roads and like their length and things like that, but the vast majority of the costing is done at runtime with the, the profile. Um, so we can actually either specify an options to the um, request the routing engine, or it uses the defaults from the profile. So the dynamic costing is um, something we don't even have to worry about updating the data in the tiles. Um, does that answer the question? update every week um, the tiles. So you also have different coastings. So like, for example, um, if, there are, if, yeah, if a road can't be passed, this is reflected. So I right, so the, the vast majority of what the, the data updates week to week bring you is access. So is this road closed, is yeah. it not? That's the majority of the data updates. And then the profile updates uh, would be, what does it cost to, to travel yeah, okay. this road? And that's where you can also specify options. Like you can say this type of road costs more for this uh, request, okay. um, which is the unique uh, advantage of Valhalla. Okay, and one, one time a week is in us. Exactly, because you're only updating things like access and underlying road network. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Oh, perfect. Thanks. Uh, yeah, great example with the golf cart. I'm thinking how you are dealing with the station when you can't uh, create a route uh, based on the rules and uh, from probably from the app perspective, what you are shown for the user, or maybe you're giving some like extra long alternative. 
Yeah, that's a really good question. It's one we had to work with, especially at the beginning, because all the data wasn't there. We didn't know where the golf carts could go and where they couldn't. Um, and at the end of the day, you still want the user to have a route. So what ends up happening is, under the hood, it's actually not usually um, the golf cart can't go here ever. It's just very, very, very expensive to take a route. Uh, so what ends up happening is we, we set up the preferences so that it takes the best possible alternative. Um, and then, again, it's just like any other routing, like sometimes you can't make a route or you just do the, the best you can and typically it ends up going on car roads but not the big ones. So it takes a really small side service road as opposed to the main road and it ends up being you know, a few kilometers longer but people get there safely. Uh, as opposed to taking the, the routes they can't take. Yeah, hey, uh, Sanna Jokela from Gispo. Uh, there is another open source uh, routing system, Graphhopper. So what's the, what do you think, uh, why did you choose Valhalla over Graphhopper? So Graphhopper is one of those uh, routing solutions. It's very good, so same with OSRM. Um, and the, the, the basic reason is because we want to support the flexibility of different profiles like golf carts and even different uh, routing profiles for different types of trucks. Um, and what Valhalla gives you is a single road network. You build the road network once and you can run all of these profiles against it and do this kind of on the fly. Whereas Graphhopper is you build it for uh, trucks, you build it for cars, you build it for bikes, etc. cetera. Um, at least, uh, I'm, I'm not as familiar with Graphhopper as opposed to OSRM, but that's my understanding is that's the way it works. It, it comes down to flexibility and um, efficiency to add new, new types of routing. I'm not sure if I understand correctly, but does it, does it have this flexibility? Does it have a... Um, a performance cost then as well because you have when you build it once your network is bigger right absolutely so it is a bit of a, a space time trade-off um, but we found that Valhalla is good enough it's fast enough and the advantages that come with the dynamic costing the dynamic profiles vast outweigh the the little bit of speed you give up um, in the process and this actually comes with some with the the way the tiles are set up, uh, it's very um, memory efficient. So you end up with a very, it works out. Um, but yes, there is a, a cost there. Any more questions? Well, since we have like two more minutes, I will have a question myself. Since you also mentioned that there is a like next uh, possibility to go further for, with other irregular vehicles. So have, do you have experience with like airports, dockyards, or maybe like uh, industry complexes where Regular small vehicles come in touch with the regular traffic? Not yet. Um, I mean, that's essentially what we're looking for. Uh, we started small with golf carts. It's a very solvable problem. Um, but then we want to expand from there. So we don't have, we don't have solutions or, or clients for that yet, but that's where we're headed. All right. Thanks for the presentation, for the updates. I think you have still one more presentation at 3 p.m. about the tiles, maybe you were mentioning. So if you're interested into that, feel free to join. Otherwise, uh, this is the end of this uh, second presentation, and we will move forward with uh, open source railway infrastructure presentation as next. <laughs>